All right, the uh, video cut me off last time. In terms of, um, you know, this, this picture here came from a very long border. <coughs> because there is a uh, repeating pattern here, um, in order to figure out how much space this takes up, you can break it down into that piece. Notice that, you know, we have our primary grid uh, with break lines between them here. And then we have a uh, primary grid over this intersection. And then we have a primary grid dot forming another break line here. So the basic uh, piece of it is um, three primary dots wide. And so you just need to add two more dots to make this work. So for example, if you uh, wanted uh, this chunk right here, it's one, two, three, four, uh, five. So <coughs> this would be something like a uh, four by odd. You need an odd number of dots uh, to make this work, to fit this basic uh, design element inside of it. So you can make, um, you know, maybe I'll make a couple just to show you, just for examples, but I'll pause and do that. So I'll, I'll turn it back on when I have a couple examples. Actually, while we're at it, notice that the, the basic design um, is also repeated top to bottom, right? There's uh, this chunk up here, which is two two primary dots, and then two primary dots in the bottom. So there's a couple different ways we can make this. I'll explore both. So one of the things I really like about uh, math that's visual that can be uh, experienced and experimented with is you can start with an idea and then you discover questions. And this is essentially uh, what professional mathematicians do, although it certainly appears more arcane and uh, ethereal. The idea is you try something out. You have an idea. Um, <clears throat> about the size of these patterns and the repetition. And then in trying out an idea, you discover something. So the idea, right, that the design itself is, uh, you know, it um, has two secondary grid uh, dots inside. It spans, you know, potentially three dots. And every time you add another three dots, uh, one overlaps. So odd, maybe. And uh, so here are some experiments. Um, you know, you do a, a two by four. And then you get sort of a sort of a weird isolated uh, link just because of the way it's done, and uh, it's, it's arguable whether that's really the same sort of thing, which makes you wonder. Uh, you know, maybe maybe there should be a, a break line here. Uh, you know, should should there be? But that that wouldn't really work very well now, would it? Because uh, that would uh, well maybe it would. You know, it would send it. It would it would do something kind of uh, similar to the other end, right? So. You know, maybe maybe that's better, but that's that's also a weird kind of loop, right? So even probably doesn't work. If you do odd, you're again left with a bit of an asymmetry, depending on where you start your break lines, which makes you wonder. You know, um, if this were a little bit longer, you would have another break line. We don't. Maybe we should anyway, just to really create a pattern. Um, you know, this uh, this loop to loop thing that we have here. So maybe. Ending with a break line is necessary to create some sort of symmetry, or, or the appearance of symmetry anyway. So those are, you know, those are those are design questions to some degree. Notice down here, um, I did a, a four by three, and we have the uh, loop de loops nicely. Although with kind of an interesting uh, thing going on here, that's different. Um, and then again, you wonder, you know, what should we have? Uh, you know, some some break lines here. That would reflect what would happen if we were extending, and so you know how would that change things? And, it, and it, this is something I've failed to convey in the class very well. Better luck next time, Kevin. Um, is that experimentation? This is how we create knowledge. Um, we experiment, and uh, you can create knowledge too. This isn't the uh, a process that only professional mathematicians can do, or only professional scholars can do. Anyone can create knowledge through experimenting and observing. So, uh, here we go. Um, this this might be uh, better. It's still got some interesting interesting consequences when you take this design and shrink it. There are some interesting consequences that you you, know, you kind of wonder um, what you should do with those. In any case, let's go ahead and look at 
this one. So this is this appears more complicated than it really is, uh, which is brilliant, I think. And you can kind of tell because there are these parallel segments here. Uh, they're not really woven together. And the idea is that every every group of four intersections here, well, what's really happening is there's this really thick band, and there's this really thick band, and uh, they've split the band. This is actually a much simpler knot than it appears. And uh, we'll see if I can trace that. It does help to have kind of a, uh, you know, a Sharpie to, uh, to do that here. And uh, I can't really tell the, uh, the, the overings. But um, with the overs and unders. So you look at this, and this is actually a much simpler knot now. Right? This is actually a two-by grid. Right? So let's, uh, let's, start, let's start thinking about that. So we've got um, some sort of break line here. Another thing I like with the knots is that even without a ruler, you can do some pretty cool experiments. So let's start experimenting. Um, again, you can you know you can watch or you can try some experiments of your own. You can pause the video and see what you come up with. All right, so I'm just going to throw some uh, some circles on here. Now I have um, looks like a bit of an L here, and uh, so maybe maybe something like this, All right? And then then what else? Somewhere over here, I've got a gap. Now remember, you know this is where that secondary uh, uh, grid is. So let's see, one, two, three. So something like this. So we're deciphering. This is a, a, a mystery. It's a, partly an art mystery, history mis uh, mystery, math mystery. It's a mixture of mysteries. So this is sort of between the third and the fourth. So maybe um, maybe something right there, and it looks like there's a similar uh, motif uh, there. So let's see, there's another secondary there. It looks like there's one down there. Um, so it's a little hard to see my pencil marks. So one, two, three. This looks somewhat symmetric. One, two, three. One, two. Let's do another one. So I'm going to set up the grid and then I'll in the break lines and then I'll pause and I'll fill it in. You may want to try to do the same. It's good practice. And then let's see. So I think there's another break line like this right here. Um, and then I see one right there. So this is this is what I think uh, is going to happen. So I'm going to pause the video and um, try it out. All right, I I filled in the grid. I made another one because uh, I realize I also want to uh, just show you. I'll pause the video and I'll do it. But I want to show you the, uh, <clears throat> how you get this effect of uh, breaking it up. But the, the big picture features of this knot, I think, are, are well explained um, by, by this grid. Right? We have the, the gap, which is here. We have this uh, feature, which is really common, right? sort of up here uh, as well. And we have it up uh, over on the right here, where it goes up and then back up and then back and then in the center here we have this uh, this break so this is uh, this is quite nice quite quite, a, quite pleasing we're in a two by one two three four five six seven grid um, right so that by itself would create a knot we've got tons of break lines in here and so you know who knows what we have we can trace it you know we can go let's see let's uh, let's find out oh wow yeah, it's uh, still a knot. So, either by um, I I don't know if anyone's really cataloged how often these are knots and how often they're links in these aluminum inscripts. So we don't know if it's fifty-fifty or if there's some clear preference for them. In any case, what I'll do is pause the video now and um, just break up a little bit of this in these strands so you can see how this knot, which is fairly simple, ends up looking so much more complicated. All right, so. I did half of the knot. And so you can see, right, on, on this side, this is a pretty mundane knot. I mean, it's pretty, um, but it, it's just a, a two-by grid. And then over here, well, that looks much more sophisticated. And it's really a brilliant technique. You take a simple knot. These are 
easy to set up and do. And then you just add some detail. And I've only been doing this, I've been doing this for less than a year, and I'm already getting a little faster at doing these intersections. I can't imagine somebody who spent years studying this technique. It would have been very easy for them to set up this basic idea and then transition to this, which is obviously uh, really um, quite pleasant to look at. But quite intimidating also. <coughs> and as for these grids, these carved grids, and those are far easier uh, than they seem. And I think I've shown you some in class, um, but you know it's it's not it's not bad to set up uh, an arc very easily. Uh, so don't be intimidated when you see something like that. You could easily set up, um, and we could you know do this uh, more carefully. I'm, I'm just eyeballing, separating out these. If I wanted a two by two um, you know, grid. There, there I have it. You know, you can still put the uh, the same uh, circles on the inside. Now our squares are deformed, but we can still do all the same uh, knot work in there um, uh, on our on our grids. There's just still the same uh, parallel pairs. You have to kind of use your imagination to see those. Uh, uh, diamonds, and then the lines, of course, are they're going to um, uh, you know change uh, a, a bit or whatever. But um, oops, well, in any case, um, <coughs> do have some uh, examples of that. Let me grab one. Yeah, here are some examples. It does get a little tricky. You can see the the you know keeping keeping track of what's what, but. So, so here's an example, right? This is a two by one, two, three, four grid. So there's two components. You can kind of see the upside down V uh, and then the V. So it's two components, but it's curved. It, it already looks fancier. If you were to then do something like breaking it up into multiple strands, well, you create a, a visually striking uh, knot that fits into a you know a curved panel, and um, the setup for it was remarkably straightforward. So, I guess a summary here. This was a two by what was it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, two by seven, um, double strand, and uh, that grid was right there. I really invite you to try making the simpler version of it in there, so you can see how that works and how that kind of comes out. Okay, hope that was helpful.